Good morning, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'm gonna do a little bit of unboxing. So as you may or may not have seen, uh, my previous videos have been covering the, uh, the build of the van. And uh, so far I'm at the stage where I've stripped it pretty much everything out. I've just got to go in and do a little bit of a tidying up operation on the, on the wiring. I'm kind of hoping to get that done today. The weather is terrible at the moment. Um, so I might leave that till, uh, till the weather's just a little bit uh, less wet. Now, we always like to think it's fun when you uh, are getting new materials in ready for a new project, and those materials have to arrive on a massive seven and a half ton truck rather than the usual delivery van. And that's exactly what happened yesterday. I had this huge great van in my street uh, offloading what I'm about to unpack. <laughs> it's quite heavy, but it's actually not as heavy as I thought it was gonna be. Um, Let's just lift it up onto the bench here. So hopefully, when I get the wrapping off this, this will be a single passenger seat. Um, now it's a second, well, it's, it's brand new, but it came out of a Renault Master 2019. Mine's a 2018, and uh, so it should be exactly uh, it's exactly the right colours and everything. Well, according to the photograph, obviously I'm about to find out. So let's get this cardboard off. Now it arrived on a pallet and uh, luckily I was able to get the truck driver to take the pallet back with him. Otherwise I'd have had to get rid of a pallet and they're, they're quite, a, quite a pain to get rid of sometimes. Now obviously uh, on my van at the moment I've got two seats and there are two pretensioners for each seat belt and each pretensioner is going to be plugged in to the computer system on the van so that on, in the event of a crash the pretensioners activate and pull the seat belt tight. Obviously I'm only going to need one pretensioner and I haven't looked yet at the wiring arrangement. I'm not sure whether there will be any issues regarding the pretensioners um, and the computer because if you unplug the pretensioners uh, sometimes it can leave a light on on your dashboard. Um, so I'm going to have to cross that bridge, you know, when I come to fit this in. But I remember on my last van, I had to buy a special fuse, where it was like a little resistor, um, which you plugged in, in in place of the pretensioner, and it tricked the computer into believing that it had a pretensioner there. So whether I've got to do that for this or not, I don't know. We shall uh, wait and see. Uh, obviously, I'll find that out on the day of fitting. There we go. Look at that, that is brand new, that's perfect. And of course, the best thing about having the passenger seat is, -da, you got the armrest as well. Um, so, and obviously the driver's seat is this side with its armrest here, so you, you, when you get in and out from the cab, you walk between the armrests. Now, some people will buy a driver's seat, um, you could, because, this type of van is made left and right hand, so all of the bolts are in the right place. Um, so you can literally just bolt in a, a driver's seat. The only problem is the, um, the handle would be on the door side, uh, which could be slightly um, problematic, um, although it's not, yeah, it's not the end of the world. Um, but I, uh, I just so happened to stumble across this one on eBay. It was available, it, like I say, it had been taken out of a 2019 van. And so uh, I just went for it and there it is. So you've got the, the uh, seat belt on there as well, which is good. So I don't have to map, uh, faff about swapping things over. That's the other thing. If you buy a driver's seat, you have to swap the, um, the seat belt thingy over to the other side. Although to be honest, all the hardware is there in place. So it's all good. So got the swivel seat base on its way as well. That's gonna be arriving in the next couple of days. And uh, at some point I've got to separate this seat. It's all using torque screws. So I've got to be, um, I've got a kit that will do that. Um, but uh, that's all good stuff. So there we go, brilliant. That's the uh, passenger seat. Now I've got to find somewhere to store it. Uh, I think that'll have to go in the conservatory. That's funny, it felt, it felt lighter when it was packed up. <laughs> It feels a little heavier now. That's fine. Uh, right, I can just pop that, pop that there, I think, just for the time being. 
So that's all ready to go. Uh, when, oops, when I'm ready to um, <clears throat> put the single seat in, that's ready to go. As you can see, I'm inundated at, at the moment with uh, a lot of uh, gear in my conservatory. So that, like, that's the old um, Lou. That's good. That's um, that's going to <clears throat> Damon's caravan in the field, I think. And uh, got the fridge here, a few offcuts, and uh, all sorts of bits and pieces. I'm trying to be as neat as I can. I've got the uh, the the bed here, which I'm going to reuse that to make the seat box um, when the time comes. Um, but then I've got a load of wood arriving tomorrow, and uh, that's <laughs> it's just finding places in the house to store everything while the van build's going on. Um, like I say, because I'm I'm. This is going to probably stretch out over the winter, this project. So I'm trying to keep it so I can still kind of live around it, if you see what I mean. Now, I was having a rethink this morning. I'm wondering whether or not making the bed first was actually the best way to do it, because the bed is going to be the largest piece of furniture there. And it's kind of going to be in the way while I'm making the other furniture. So I'm actually thinking in terms of probably making the kitchen galley first. Um, because otherwise, because all the time I'm trying to fit the, the kitchen galley, I'm going to have the bed immediately behind me, um, and it's going to be it's going to be kind of awkward. So I'm going to make the bed. I think um, after the kitchen galley is made, um, the seat box doesn't really matter because it's kind of got its own space anyway. Um, but I think yeah, because obviously the the galley kitchen is going to be the more complex piece of furniture, and there's going to be a lot more adjusting and a lot more nuance going on with that. Um, so I think that's probably a good idea. Now that does mean that it's possible I won't have had my bed made by the time the winter camp comes around. Um, so I'll have to <laughs> camp out in the back of my van on a camp bed, but, um, but that's fine. I don't mind doing that. It's just kind of a one-off camp. So the other thing I'm going to be unboxing is, um, well, saying that I've already had a peek, but I want to, I want to properly look at it. Um, I opened the box this morning just to make sure it was the thing that I thought it was and uh, it's going to be this thing. This is going to be the new cooker and it's a make I've never heard of before. Apparently they're quite, um, they're quite new. This particular design is quite new but I bought it because of the size. Um, because I'm going to have a very narrow galley kitchen, I need this, the, the depth of the sink uh, and the hob to be obviously quite small. And there are not that many options out there um, that are sort of less than sort of a, a foot deep. And this one, uh, it's, it's still not a foot, it's like about, I think it's about 13 inches. <clears throat> so, oh, that's the bottom. That's the top, or is it? No, I was right the first time. Uh, so I'm going to just take a look at this um, bubble wrap. <laughs> um, we're going to get a look at this for the first time and see whether it's going to be suitable. Hopefully it is. The interesting uh, thing about this is you can have it in a left or a right hand configuration. Um, it's got this adjustable lid but apparently the configuration that I've ordered is the one I want. So we'll see. That's the only other thing, packaging. Luckily, luckily we've got a cardboard recycling center just up the road, so I shall be using that. Okay, so this is a, a sink and a hob. Uh, so let's have a look and it's made by a company called Can and that'll be fine, that's perfect. Um, that's exactly what I want, oh it's a little back heavy and obviously you've got this um, nice glass cover as well that uh, sits out and I like that. Well, it's not going to rattle. Um, mm, I don't know that one. Good for you. So what's that bouncing on then? Oh, I see, right, you've got these massive, two massive great big rubber bungee things here, and it sits on that, and yeah, that's not gonna rattle, that's good. So, 
My main concern, not really a concern, kind of slight first world problem, but my main thing was, would I be able to wash my hair in this sink? And it looks like with this extra bit around the hob, which I presume drains, I don't know if it's got a little slope on it or not, but uh, I'm gonna assume it, it, any water spilt here will drain into the sink. That's quite a nice catchment area if I want to wash my hair, although getting a hob wet is probably not ideal. Um, but uh, on that last sink I had, it was only quite narrow, and every time I washed my hair, the water would run down my elbows and spill out all over the, um, the wooden sides. So this, I think I might be able to sort of use. Um, but anyway, I've got the, the hole for the tap. I'm gonna put a London tap on there. It's just gonna be a cold water tap. I'm not gonna go for hot and cold water. I never have gone for a hot water system in any van that I've ever had, um, and it's never ever been an issue. Um, hot water systems, um, I mean, they're quite a luxury, but they're incredibly expensive. Um, and of course, you're, you're running them all the time, so they're, they're gonna be using gas. Um, obviously, it's fine if you're a, a, a hookup. I presume they run on electric as well, but um, I might be wrong on that. But, um, but if I want a bit of hot water, I just pop the kettle on and it's not a problem. So, and again, because I'm not doing a lot of cooking uh, these days, this, you know, I don't have to have one of those massive, great big, um, you know, double hob and sink arrangements, which is sort of this long. I had one of those before because it takes up so much of the work surface. Um, so obviously a sink's important. And to be honest, the last few times I've gone camping, I've never actually used my hob, um, but obviously it's handy to have one. So I thought this is about the most compact unit um, that I could find um, that actually, um, does what I need it to. And uh, that's, yep, it's got a little, I see a little flash in there, so that's good. A little piezo igniter, or piezo igniter, I don't know how you pronounce that. Um, and it's got the, looks like it's got the plumbing with it as well. So, yes, yeah, there we go. We've got a 90 degree plum, uh, plumbing fitting. Um, and then that gray tube that I took off the van yesterday, uh, we'll just slide straight onto that and uh, job done. Although I'll probably use a bit of sealant with it. Um, brilliant, that's exactly what I want. So there we go, another piece of equipment ready for the build. Right then, so I'm gonna have to sort this lot out now. I really detest this um, solid polystyrene stuff because it just, it becomes like electromagnetically charged and it sticks to everything. It's such a pain, especially when you start breaking it up and it turns into these little snow particles. Um, but anyway, right, I'm gonna have to go away now and deal with this lot and um, may have a little trip down to the, uh, the cardboard recycling bank. Although I may actually flatten the cardboard, keep hold of it, because I'm gonna be needing to make some templates at some point. Uh, so I might do that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that just to be on the safe side, make sure I've got enough cardboard. Um, but there we go. That was it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day and I will see you in the next video um, whenever that comes along. Until then, take care.